getting moving on uh, Volskaya Industries. This is the great map to flank around the side. Yeah, so we're going to see uh, what these teams are able to do for flanking. Um, oh, real quick aside here before we start, I know there's some chat in the channel for uh, rankings and such. The players sign up as singles or doubles, and then what we'll do is we organize them to have uh, more or less an even SR, but also we take into account roles. So it's pretty important that, you know, that the roles are even as well. So we just don't have a team of even SR, everybody's DPS or healing. So that's how we arrange the teams. For those right. of you interested. And I think you'd be surprised at how well a lot of players play when they're actually given an opportunity to uh, play in an organized team fashion. You know, comp, obviously, there's a mechanical component that's important for our players to have, but it's also a big teamwork component. And if you look at kind of our week one games compared to our weeks now, especially some of our lower SR players, they've mm -hmm. improved dramatically just simply by playing with people that kind of know what they're doing and help address, you know, positioning and things like that. I know our teams that are going to be playing in our grand finals practice regularly together, and there's a huge disparity in skill levels there, but they've got their players helping each other, giving advice, giving tips, looking at what's working for their team, and part of it's dealing with, you know, the team that you were assigned and who you're working with. Mm -hmm. the, ment like, the mental component is such a big thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of these players, you know, when they're in the zone, they can exceed what their SR rank is. And especially with the support of their team, it can really go a long way. All right, so let's see if we got any flankers on this map. Oh, Team Ruby getting really aggressive, just trying to run it down. Ooh, just snuck in there. So kind of a divey composition here. Very gets right much. behind Jade, but Hawk quickly picks up Loth, which means that... This might stop this Ruby push as Tremulus goes down out of mech as well. Because all they're left with Shock and all they're healing is Lucio. And yep. he's down too. Uh. Yeah, it looks like that really aggressive uh, moves out of Ruby did not pay off. Hawks back on Diva just kind of dealing with Chauzo. But it does get knocked out of mech. It does. That's still a good attempt. I mean, that was a valiant attempt there. By yeah, the it's important, though. Yeah, we don't want Shoutso to get picked off there, or else they're going to be staggered and definitely going to have to wait a long time. But, but notice Jade, though, paid attention immediately to their squishy healers and support. They said, we need to get rid of them, and they shut them down. In reality, Team Ruby was able to pick up the first triangle on the point, so Jade did not respond quickly enough, and they got a pretty good mm -hmm. advantage here going into it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's on point right now. Ebo's got to be careful with Shoutso up there. Again, we see Shoutso always flanking. It doesn't matter what his hero is, he's always back there. Picks up Nerezuri. He's going to have his ult. Probably waiting to get a little bit of heals. Oh. Not as good an ult as we saw before, but no. Tranquility. Uh, definitely a necessary one. Angelo's trying to get his ult up, gets it out of Ebo's. He's going to have his Earth Shatter here. Oh, stops oh. Tremulus from picking up the mech. Slams the ground, doesn't manage to stay up, and Hawks in the mech, but he's getting knocked out as well. He got a lot of down on that alt. Not a, not a lot of cleanup and follow up on that. Oh, shock and awe with the pick up of Hawk there. There's Yuri a little out of position here. If he goes down, careful. Jade might be in a tough spot. They're going to need that ult to hold this big push coming out of him. Because you're going to see an ult out of Shock and on Shoutso here that's just going to make this very tough to hold for Team Jade. My ultimate is charging. Ready for transcendence. You see Shoutso coming in off the flank here. Again, always kind of keeping an eye on him as he comes around. They do not see him back there. Shout so Starting really. To make a couple shots. It's like a, I want to be real quiet talking when I'm watching him play there. <laughs> so he's spotted right now. They know he's back there. Ooh, is anybody going after him? It doesn't seem like they're going to respond. And, oop, there he goes. There he gets he goes. a Discord on him. He is hurt pretty bad. It's going to be hard to do anything. He's got to get back to the attack. He all comes down. Doesn't manage to pick up anybody. Hawk, though, in the back. Here is Ari answered that with a big huge ult. Whoa. It's like Team Ruby's starting to pick this up again. Shoutso still came in and managed to take a few out with that ult there. Octo is able to pick it up. SJ Ripper goes down really quick. 
they got an opportunity here. Jade does have close spawn. Might be able to pick up some kills here. There we go. That means that they're going to be able to pick this up. Jade is able to retake the point. Well, let's see if they can hold them off and reposition themselves. Yeah, it looks like this shouldn't be too challenging for them. This Team Ruby's starting to back off. That was very close for Team Jade. That was. Sometimes with a close spawn, you run the risk of having people trickle in and then ultimately you never reposition yourselves. It's a slow bleed into that second objective. The current walking along the back portion there. Saw Lucio. Thinks he might be able to pick him off here if he can. Or some Yibo. Yibo oh. misses the sleep dart. Makes it really tough, but he does have his healing station right back there. He can get back into spawn. Jump back in. He's waiting for that heat to come like this. Oh, just oh. goes down. Which means that Decurion's going to have an opportunity to move in here, but he blinks around. Isn't able to do a whole lot. See, this is where the close respawn, though, works out for Jade because even if they do start to stagger here, they are going to have a good opportunity, but they all somehow manage to get taken down by the last two remaining healers. Angelos comes in there though. It is going to be challenging for them to take them. Yibo does finally manage to land that sleep on the tracer. And you can see Team Jade, they're already starting to reinforce. Team Jade, or Team Ruby is pretty far back there. This is going to be a hard one. Oh, we got Winston jumping in there now. He's already hurt as Hawk just slicing him up back there. Did a great job on the back line. Tremulous might be looking to. Trying to initiate again, though, this is going to be really hard for them to do anything with. Absolute Lucio alt. I'd be really surprised if Jade does this. Jade's, or Ruby's blowing a lot of alts, and yeah, they're way out of position. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was very necessary, either. <laughs> no, and especially because they were already kind of losing this fight. Yeah. Um, it might have been a pretty big misplay on Ruby's part, as you can see, the alts for Team Jade is really starting to build up here. So one advantage though is they do have the time working for them at this point because they basically they have one third left. Um, they will have an, at least a couple of large pushes they can build up their alts with, so they have that. But I'm still not sure why they waste it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, looking at team comps, one thing I think is very interesting is Yibo's definitely been a really strong Mercy player, and I'm very interested to see why they opted to take Yibo off of Mercy and put him more towards the. Um, hmm. You have two very different healers. Oh, yeah. Ooh, Shabso manages to pick him up. Roth gets his ult going. Angela's swinging wildly. Might be able to land a big ult, especially without a rival Ryan there. There's nothing stopping him. He's just lot just down, right but it doesn't work. Tribulus pops the ult. Wow, great moves by Hawk there. Just avoiding it. Shabso goes down. And a space-making ult at that. Yep. But again, Jade, though. Able to pick this point up, and they've got a lot of alts. They've got that big Zarya alt. They've got Angelos. They got Nerazuri. It's looking pretty good. So Shoutso looks like he's switching over to the Rhine here, probably to deal with the fact that Angelos has got free reign when it comes to the Earth Shatters. So I think uh, I'm gonna call it. I think we're gonna see a big Angelos alt here on Jade. I think we're gonna see Jade do some crazy offensive move here. All right, we'll see what they got All here. All right. Ooh, we got? there we go. This is gonna open up the. This is that completely prevents this push from happening oh, for Team J, for Team Ruby right here. You're noticing they're gonna back up. If they engage on this, that is a big mistake that I think Jade's gonna take advantage of. So if Ripper's able to get this ult up, they're gonna have the Zarya Tracer combo, which can be very devastating. Ooh, he is in a very tough spot, but zips out of Did there. Did a very good job of distracting Shouts and exposing him, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can see his health's going down, his shield's down, and now Angelo. opportunity. Angelo steps up to the bat here. Steps up to the plate. Here we go. Angelo's probably slamming his ult down. No, he's no. not to. But it doesn't matter. Hawks in the back. Picking him up, nice. All oh, took out charge on Angela. Yes, dealer to Karen there. Nice. This is going to be it. Jade's going to hold this point. We're down to the last final five seconds here. Really clutch moves there. Ruby was just ready to cap this point multiple times, but weren't able to ever finish it off there. Wow. A lot of opportunities again. We go back to talking about alt management. We saw a lot of that happening here this round, more right. so than the other one, I would say. 
Yeah, right around that two and a half minute point, you notice Team Ruby had blown just alt after alt when they were already down, I'd say, you know, one or two players. I think what was tough about that is I think that was the push where they were at that 85% and it feels like, oh, we're so close. We're going to get it, you know, just a little bit further. But when you're already that far down and the reinforcement and the spawn is so close for Jade, you're just wasting them at that point. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to go down and bring it back. So let's see what Jade can do here. And like we talked about at the beginning of this match, the mental component's really important here. I guarantee that Team Jade's feeling really good about that hold. They yeah. were on kind of the back foot for most of it, and now they see we could win this. Yeah. We saw a lot of dive comps last week, too. I wanted to see if anybody went a true. I mean, we saw a little bit going on there. Well, um, I think Team Ruby's first take on this first point was fairly divey. I mean, they had a Zarya, they had the D.Va. Oh, they were yeah. really coming in there, which was, which was good. I enjoy this map. Really? Yeah. I, think, I, I like the flanking opportunity on A. B, it gets really frustrating. I was going to say I that. Mean, I'm, I'm just... Yeah. The first point's fun. I mean, you yeah. can cap it. Most people cap it fairly quickly. Yeah, but even if you're not capping and you're defending it, there's so many variations as to how you can come in on that point. I mean, you've got the flanking from the side. You can come around completely from the other side of the point, which makes it fun. Yeah. No, it's true. There. I mean, there's a lot of opportunities. This, these maps, I think, could use a lot more. I think... You know, what we saw out of Team Jade that I think got them pretty far in the tournament was that we they used a lot of innovative approaches, and we're just not seeing that like we saw the first week. Remember, you know, we had Bastion plays, we had Were they the reverse, Orisa the stuff. Reverse defense, or the reverse no, there's another team. They're already initiating here really quick, just like Team Ruby did at the, their fight. And they're already in the back there trying to dive in. SJ Ripper's going to get picked up out of there, though. It's not looking good. His Team Ruby solidly defends this, but he does pick up Shoutso, which is good for them, but they're losing just too many to make this push happen, and it looks like they're going to need to back down. It's all Dar's able to walk out of there, though, with some help. Ooh. No, no, he's not. And Yibo's going to go down, too, which means they are heavily staggered. They're going to have to wait for Yibo's respawn. Interesting. Let's see if Yaibo stays on Ana, and he does. Yeah, I think, you know, Ana's a great healer. Those alts on Angelus have been good, and I think we just have seen a lot of success out of his Mercy play. I know it's been something that teams have really not been able to handle very well. Ooh, Angelus picks up the charge, but gets slapped on the way out. Goes for the counter, but doesn't hit anybody. Use way out of position, but a big hook out of shot, so picks him up. Jade, though, starting to collapse on that front line that's not being supported by the back. Shotso's back there. He's at half health. Let's see if they pick him up. They don't. And he's just getting free reign on his team right there. Oh, manages to nail him. Talk again with Genji. Uh, very strong DPS plays there. Ooh, he's coming waits from for the ult to come there. down and just starts shredding. What? Really great plays there, and that uh, moves right there on that ult, secures the point for Team Jade, and I'd be shocked if Ruby tries to contest this. Wow. They definitely aren't right now. And Hawk, one of our previous hero highlights uh, from the past. Am I, am I mistaken? Well, Maverick's correcting me here on air. I don't think that's true. He was a contender. I think that he was a right. contender, a heavy well, contender. A heavy contender. Right, but with, that. depending on the stream's voting, he could be... Oh, that's true. Yeah. Charge coming in off Angelos right here. He gets picked off, though. Isn't able to get inside the Zenyatta it's in time. A lot of defensive alts coming down there. Yuge going down. SJ Ripper, though, get taken out of the Kurens, who was our hero highlight. Yes. <laughs> and Team Kuren was this week. Yep. So just a reminder with the new rules on Overwatch, which I guess aren't new anymore, but they just got to make to that yellow triangle, and they will be and able that's to. that's a win. They'll be able to take the win here. Right now, for those of you that are just joining us, Team Ruby is up one. Jade trying to pick up their first win of the day here. My ultimate is almost ready. And they are dealing with a lot of 
pressure at the front here. That Ryan Zarya alternating. We got Angelos up with this all. He's gonna get real hungry here. Very offensive Ryan player. Yeah, but unfortunately, Hawk gets taken out there, which means that we're gonna have to wait a little bit for him to come back here. He's been a big DPS player. Ooh. See those grabs again from Shoutso from the side. Ooh. Yeah, he's always pressuring. He's always in very bizarre locations, and I think catches the team off guard. And you look at that, he's looking to grab somebody in that little area there, and we'll see if he's able to. He does a very good job of that. We got Hawk running around the outside, being sneaky. We've got both flankers in the back here trying to make a pick, but Tremulus sniffs this out immediately and starts to address it. Tremulus is not the tank you want to agitate. He's very aggressive, will push into the edge, almost sacrifice himself to get you out of the way. So you can see as he does that, so we got off. Genji in the back and that ult out of Angelos picks him up. We got another ult from Tremulus. This time he doesn't get it and that just before the ult charge comes oh. out of use. Look at that, the ult coming out of Nerazuri is gonna lock this point in for Jade and they just gotta hold on tight and hope that they can do this. If they can keep them staggered, here they go, staggering in, they're picking them up. And the timer's starting to tick here. Ruby's running in Ooh. one at a time. Yuge with a nice ult grab. Manages to pick up one of the healers, but they're already at three quarters. It's coming quick. And that's it. And that's it for Jade. Wow. Tremulous just inches away from getting on that point and causing some big issues. Loth had his ult ready to pop, and that could have completely shut down that last point. But Jade manages to walk away and make this a one on one. All right. Definitely gonna see a Hawk alt out of this. Really phenomenal play here. Yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. Comes up. This is actually what completely secures this point. Very unexpectedly. Look at that. Still half health. Manages to just get so aggressive on these players. That is a confident Genji player right there. The whole time looking at SJ Ripper there. They didn't even see him coming from behind before it was too late and they were totally shredded. Nice. Very good play there. And we're gonna take a quick break here as our teams get rested and ready to go.